This is an oral history in the Sacramento Room, Special Collections of the Sacramento Public Library. Um, it's May 5th, 2018. Uh, the time is uh, 9.58. Um, we are here with Gus Canellos, um, longtime resident of Florin, um, certainly um, its best known historian, without a doubt. Uh, Florin is located in the central part of Sacramento County. It is currently a census designated place, but as we're going to find out soon, it's much more than that. Um, it is a place, it is a home, it's got a rich history. So uh, Gus, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you. It's, welcome. it's a real honor. So tell us, let's start off with um, your origins. Um, when were you born and what to you is your first memory? What's the first thing you can remember? I was born November 6, 1928, but uh, in those days, they didn't have what they call, uh, well, they did have a hospital, but they, they had in Florin, California, they had a midwife. She'd come out, that was a person that you couldn't get, because we were out in the ranch, you couldn't get to the, to the hospital in time. So the midwife would come out and perform the, uh, whatever needed to, had be, to be done. And then the next day, uh, I would go to the hospital. Okay. Okay. So, so you mentioned ranch. Yes. Tell me. My father was a uh, right where Swift Dodge was located, which is no longer there. Swift, uh, the building is there, but Swift Dodge. Uh, my parents at the time owned ten acres, and they were right alongside, across the street from where the Florence Center is now oh, wow. but, but prior to that there was 10 acres and uh, my father was a butcher uh, he uh, would uh, come there with his brother my uncle Jim and they started a the butcher business but he had a friend that came in later on who wanted to become a partner and his name was Dan Claudianus. He must have amassed a lot of money, and he decided he wanted to become a partner and go into the, the butcher business. Uh, Mr. Claudianus did all the purchasing. My dad and I would go out, and uh, we'd go to the different ranches where my dad would purchase the, the livestock to be processed, for to be butchered and then they'd be brought back here and my dad would sell the processed meat to the uh, Greek restaurants here because there's a lot of oh, Greeks were here. Got it. And then they, of course there were a lot of Chinese who uh, had markets and of course they used to come out and buy the meat that they needed. So the, the meat that, that your father would buy was all locally sourced. Right, right. Which, which is something that we went away from, right? And now we're coming back now into. we're coming right. Very interesting. Um, so tell us a bit about your mom. Well, my mother was Italian. She was born oh. in Lucca, Italy. And uh, I actually, uh, she came over here. Her father, who was, uh, name was Galeazzi. Okay. And, uh, he came here first, and he came here and uh, worked on the Central Pacific Railroad, which later became the Southern Pacific Railroad. Railroad. Do you have a good sense of when he got here? Yeah, he came here in, uh, I think it was 1907. I okay, believe. okay. Yes, and uh, he, you uh, know, went to work for the Central Pacific Railroad, which became the Southern Pacific. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, then he wanted my mother to come over. No, he wanted the, my, my aunt to come over, Aurora. But instead, Aurora got married, so she had, 
he had my mother come over, and when my mother was here, she came in and uh, she moved in with my father, and my grandfather, and uh, then uh, uh, my father met her uh, downtown at a uh, friend of ours, uh, Bruno Sibio, who was a shoe, shoe cobbler. Okay. Uh, his wife, uh, we called her Mama Rosa, mm. and she would, uh, she was just like my my, my grandmother. Uh, she spoke nothing but Italian. Mm. My mother spoke nothing but Italian. So she introduced my father to my mother, and uh, that's where my mother met my father because my father and Bruno were good friends. Gotcha. And uh, they. Uh, she, they spoke Italian, and she lived with, with my grandfather. My mother did, and uh, then, she, my dad married, my mother in 1900. Okay. Okay. So, and, uh, how did they get to Florence? Well, uh, first of all, the property there on Florence was where the, uh, my uncle Jim and my, my father. Uh, purchased the property there. Okay. They prop they purchased it from the Barley. Uh, Charlie Barley owned the property across from the state capitol. Those apartments and everything. Okay. Yep. He owned that, and he's one fellow that never believed in banks, and he buried the money in the ground. <laughs> and and uh, he had two sisters who were school teachers, and a brother Gus, and. Uh, uh, they must have amassed, amassed a fortune because they had buy homes and sell them and everything. But uh, none of them got married, and they all lived together. The two sisters were school teachers, mm. and they lived on the corner of Florin and uh, Stockton Boulevard. And that's where the Barley Ranch was. And across the street was the... Um, the uh, rest of them, I mean, it was the bar there in the saloon, and uh, they, uh, my dad would, uh, the, the two sisters complained that too many people were making noise. No. Oh. So they had trees planted clear over there where they couldn't see the, what was going on over there. Oh. Because in those days they were bootlegging. Ah, and, uh, okay. And so the, they knew that there were a lot of people coming there and there was too much noise and they didn't want to see what was going on or here. They did complain, but they had a lot of prominent businessmen back in those days mm -hmm. that came out there. And of course they had houses of ill repute there. Sure. So I want to go back to your mom a bit. Um, so I can imagine you being a little boy right. and walking into her kitchen and smelling these wonderful smells. Tell me about the kinds of foods she would make. Well, being a, she's Italian, and of course, my father was Greek, and the, the food is basically the same, Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. And my mother would prepare the meals. We had people working on the on the on the, the slaughterhouse there, and we even had boarders that stayed there. And my mother would prepare the food for the, the family and also the boarders. And she'd have Italian food, Greek food, and uh, we'd have uh, Greek stew, we'd have lamb stew, we'd have um, uh, steaks. And uh, anyway, uh, we had steaks there all the time. Yeah. What was, your, what was your favorite food that your mother would make? Well, my mother's favorite food that I can recall that she made was the... Greek stew. The Greek stew. What's in the Greek stew? The Greek stew was lamb mm. and the beef, and of course, uh, I had steak too. Oh, nice. And that was good, good food. Great. Okay. So tell me about the kinds of things you would do um, with your dad. Um, did you ever help out at the butcher shop? Oh, yes, I was there. Uh, first of all, like I say, my dad was the would go out we would he would go out and purchase the livestock and brought it back to be processed with uh, my uncle was the person that 
kind of ran the business at at, uh, at the butcher shop, and uh, then Mr. Cladianus, a partner that came in, mm -hmm. would go out and he would purchase the the stuff. We would go out and pick them up and bring them back, and uh, in those days. Uh, it, things were so Florin Wood was a dirt road. Right, yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, uh, in those days, we had so many activities going. I would saddle a horse in the morning, and I would go down and ride, ride a horse down to Florin at the depot. Yeah. And I would unload cattle there, and I'd drive them back down really? Florin. Really? Down Florin Road? Down Florin Road to, to where opposite to the the Florence Center is in, and I, I flew airplanes out there, took a, oh. airplane lessons. Well, we can talk more about that. That sounds pretty interesting. So, so your dad's business was right across the street from the Florin Mall? From the Florin Mall. Okay, okay. And then, um, okay, so let's bounce ahead a bit to school. Your earliest memories of going to school, what did you enjoy about school? What did you not like so much? Well, I liked going to school because we got in those days. You, you know, you got to, you had your friends. You picked your friends, and you, they had, uh, they called me uh, the, the toughie because uh, uh, every new pupil would come in there, and they thought they were the tough birds. They'd stick them in a room with me. And we'd have a fight, yeah. and I'd always come out. I'd always, I'd always whip them, and uh, they. Uh, so they called me the, the the uh, the, the toughy. The toughy. Okay. Yeah. So was this in grade school or is this grade school? Okay. And and where did you attend grade school? Florin West Elementary. Florin West. Okay. There was a Florin East school too. Okay. That was the original school. Um. Those days you got out of Florin West and it was summertime and you had, I don't know, two or three months to do things. Obviously you were helping out with your mom and dad, but tell me about the kinds of things that you did just for fun during those summers. Well, during the summer, of course, we liked to go, I always liked to go to take trips and my mother would too, and we'd go to Southern California Ooh. and uh, We'd visit relatives down there, and we'd go uh, down to uh, uh, Bodega Bay, and because uh, we liked to buy, my mother liked the ocean, mm -hmm. and uh, my father liked the mountains. So uh, uh, that, and basically, uh, we'd do a little traveling, and uh, I enjoyed that because I got to meet my relatives and yeah. new friends. So what kinds of things did you like to do around Florin itself? Well, around Florin itself, of course, there was, uh, I used to go to Cotto's Fish Market. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and the market uh, building is still there today. It houses the women's uh, uh, dog jewelry there that uh, they have a club. And uh, I used to go to uh, Cotto's Fish Market, and I'd go in there. Of course, in those days, Mrs. Cotto and Mr. Cotto used to make lunches for us because my mother was busy at home preparing for the other people. And when we'd go to school, I'd go down there, and they had a great big wooden barrel, and then there was dried shrimp. And I'd reach in, grab a grab, handful of shrimp in my hands, stick a shrimp in my pockets, and then Mr. and Mrs. Cotto would make our lunches, and Dave Cotto, the son, uh, they called him Mooch. And uh, he, uh, he came back, and, and, and his sister Mary, and they worked in there, and they, of course, did mostly all the catering for the Japanese people there. Okay, okay. And of course, uh, uh, then uh, uh, from there, I'd either go over to W.O. Davies' uh, swimming pool. Okay. W.O. Davies was a very prominent man. He was uh, very influential in the community, and he had a swimming pool there. And we'd go down there, and I'd spend some time at the swimming pool. 
And then uh, a lot of times I'd come back and I'd go visit with um, Chet the barber. Okay. And then uh, I'd go with Wally Brinson and on the Brinson Ranch, which is where the uh, old, uh, uh, the, where the, the, the Canellas Lane is today, which was named oh. after my father and I. Okay. And uh, that was Lumberjack then in those days. And um, they went, that's where uh, Mr. Brinson and I would go out onto the, <clears throat> onto the ranch and I'd go with him on, ride with him on the tractor while he was uh, excavating the land there. Okay, okay. So um, much of your childhood took place during the Great Depression. Right. Right? And that was during the Depression when yeah. we, we, like I say, we had the slaughterhouse. We didn't have to worry about meat. And even during the time, the Prohibition time, we had barrels of wine down in the basement and prominent people from Sacramento would come out there, influential, would come yeah. out in. So the Frazanettis were, were well, the doing their thing, right? They, well, uh, excuse me. Uh, the, originally, the uh, Frazanettis uh, became established there in uh, 1879. And uh, I, I, found proof that they were there before that, but that's what they accepted. And then uh, uh, James Rudder, the prominent uh, person who was the James Rudder horticulturist, hmm. and he traveled all over the world and brought back different samples to be uh, processed. And uh, he and his wife had a huge mansion on the corner of Florin and Power Inn. In 1937, my parents purchased the 10 acres of the estate. And uh, then from there, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Rudder had this beautiful mansion because Mrs. Mansion, Mrs. Rudder passed away. My mother was superstitious because Mrs. Mansion died, uh, Mrs. Rudder died there. And uh, she uh, had a beautiful mansion tore down. It was a shame oh, today it would be okay. worth a lot of money. Mm, all right, all right. So I want to come back to the Depression. It, it kind of sounds like your family was able to get through it okay. Oh, was yeah. there much suffering? No, no, no suffering at all. Because like I say, we had the butcher shop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, that was uh, very, very easy for us. Okay. We even, people would come out to visitors and uh, my father had me go into the meat locker and I'd bring out meat, put it in each one's car, automobile. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you guys were pretty immune to the Great yeah. Depression. Yeah. So um, throughout the entire county, there were a few places that are more diverse um, historically then Florin, because you had a, a Japanese-American enclave, a Chinese-American enclave, and, and of course, uh, Anglo-American enclave. Talk about, if you could, um, relations between those different groups in Florin. Well, like I say, and uh, the Japanese and I were real close. Uh, Robert Sasaki, whose father was the reverend there, Robert and I were very close. And I would go to their Japanese movies and watch the movies there. And uh, Robert and I, uh, they would invite me to their home. They had big cement tubs, and we would take baths together, <laughs> the whole family. And uh, we would, uh, uh, we were real close friends in school. And so one morning, Early in the morning, my dad was going, and I were going out to purchase the cattle, and we seen a group all huddled up in front of the, the Japanese church mm -hmm. a hall. And, and, and where's that located? That was right there on Pritchard and, and Florin Road. Okay. And uh, my father says, oh, somebody must have died. And I says, well, wait a minute, there's Robert. Uh, stop, I'll go find out. My father stopped. I said, Robert, 
he kept going like this, pushing away from me, you know, like not to come over and swim. I said, what's the matter? He said, I can't talk to you. I says, yes, you can, you're my friend. No, no, I can't talk to you. I says, okay, if that's the way you want to be it, forget it, we're not friends anymore, I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't want to come, once you come to my house, I don't want to come to yours. He says, if I tell you something, he says, you won't say anything. I didn't know what. Japan's going to bomb Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. Now, this was December 4th. And I says, what? He says, yeah. And he says, I says, how do you know that? He says, well, Mr. Tanagawa owned it kind of Tanagawa's department store. And he, his uh, son, was in the, in, in, the, in the Imperial Army of Japan and had shortwave radios in the basement. And they would relay uh, messages out to the boats that, off of Goleta, California, near Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, that's why I don't tell anybody. And I says, well, I won't. I went back and told my dad. He said, oh, you guys are just kids. You guys don't know what you're talking about. Forget it. Sure enough, December 7th, Pearl Harbor happened. And here I knew about it on the 4th. And uh, my, uh, at that time, uh, it, it was so, so difficult because here I had good friends, Japanese friends. Remember they had the alien law then back in those mm -hmm. days where you couldn't, aliens could not purchase property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how uh, we became friends when the aliens came there in 19, I mean the, uh, the uh, yeah, the uh, Asians came there in 1918 uh, from China, from Japan. Mm -hmm. The first Asians there were the Chinese because they worked on the Central Pacific Railroad, right. which later became the Southern Pacific, and they were the ones that built the tunnels to store the wine in 1869 where James Rudder established the winery. And uh, I played in those tunnels as a child. And later on, my dad bulldozed a lot of expensive cars and trucks in there. And it makes me sick today to think about it. Yeah. But you know, I played in those caves when I was a young man. So um, I've got a question about strawberries. Oh, yeah. The, Just Flo that's Florin, all I have to say, strawberries. Yeah, Go. Florin was known as the strawberry capital of the world. <clears throat> the first strawberries were ever shipped out of Florin uh, to markets in the east came from Florin, California. Did you yeah. have strawberries on a daily basis? Uh, <clears throat> I didn't. Uh, I didn't care too much strawberries, but my family did. Oh, yeah. And uh, the first Tokay grapes came right. out of Florin, California. Mm -hmm shipped out of California to markets. The first wine that was processed from the, uh, from the uh, uh, wineries there were shipped to Eastern markets. So Florin was very prominent and prior to 1941 in the history of being the strawberry capital of the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, that's where the, uh, China, the Japanese came there and they had with the alien law and they went to the, they couldn't buy any property so they went to the Caucasians and asked them if they would share crop with them. And the Caucasians said, yes, we'll do that. And they, the ones, because Florin had canals and the Florin canals, you'd come down in the canals to the, to the depot and then uh, they'd, the Chinese, the Japanese people would come in and purchase food from the, Japanese markets that were there. Uh, getting on there, I can kind of go back on that canal deal. Yeah. Um, James Rudder, I mean, uh, the uh, the fellow who uh, became governor of California, uh, he uh, he was one that uh, was born and raised there. He, he, in Florence, California, he attended school and uh, you have a photo here in, in your display here yeah. of the first school. And uh, the, uh, the gentleman
Hiram oh, Johnson. Johnson. He became governor of California. He lived yeah. in Florida. He's in the school in Florida. U.S. And, senator, too. And he'd, he'd come over to, to what he did at the time. He was from the original school that was on McCumber and Florin. Okay. And later on, when he, he'd come down and he'd board the train and go into Sacramento, and that's where he, uh, people would come there and board the train at the depot, and anyone who wanted to go to Stockton would go, would go uh, south. Anybody who wanted to go to Sacramento would go north on the train. But um, he later, he became the governor of California. Yeah, and right. uh, that's very prominent because it's very notable to have a, a governor of California that attended your school. That's right. The Absolutely. elementary school. Absolutely. And the difference between the schools were Florin West and Florin East. Florin West is where I was brought up in. And in 1924, I entered school there in 1924. And uh, then in uh, Florin East School was across the railroad tracks on the east side. But that's where okay. McCumber and uh, Florin Road are there. Today the school still stands there. And the, the reason for the two schools were because my mother spoke Italian and uh, father Greek. That's all the language that I knew. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On the east side, they had the school where the Caucasians uh, could not uh, could not uh, uh, speak uh, English, mm -hmm. so they went to school there. So I had to go over there to learn to speak English. Oh wow! As wow. well as they had to go there to learn English too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I want to I want to back up. Now you mentioned the the rail line running north south um, through Florin. Um, so obviously there were times where you went to Sacramento as a kid, right? Right. Did you take the train up there, or did you drive up? No, you won't believe this. In those days, my uncle would go down to deliver, to collect money to the restaurants and the markets that we uh, sold the processed meat to. He would take me and drop me off at a, at a theater. And in those days, he dropped me off at the Mission Theater okay. because there was a Greek fellow that ran the, can the restaurant part in there. And where was the Mission Theater? It was a Mission Theater, it was right on on uh, Fifth and uh, and K Street House, and of course, my uncle would always tell the Greek fellow there, "Don't let the guy go in and see what's going on there." <laughs> of course, the guy was always busy with his customers, and I would go in there and peep, and I'd see the burlesque shows, and I'd see what was going on, and, uh, and then after that, other days my Uncle would drop me off at the Alameda Theater. Okay. And he'd drop me off at the Liberty Theater. In those days, you go to the, and then you, you had the Liberty Theater and the Capitol Theater, which I later became manager. And, oh, uh, wow. and then uh, uh, I used to go down there and watch five movies. No, I'm sorry, five serials in those days for 10 cents. Wow, what a deal. And those were like Flash Gordon. Right. And, and uh, the different ones like Superman and stuff like that. Did you yeah. ever have a chance to go to the Alhambra? Oh yeah, I was there very many times at Alhambra. And in fact, my, my uh, uh, god sister, uh, she was, uh, she ran the, the, managed the Alhambra Theater for a while. Okay. And uh, uh, we always used to go down there and watch the different serials that came on. So, so if you knew that you had an opportunity to go to Sacramento and there was one place, one place you could go to, what would that place be in Sacramento? Well, I, I really like to go to the, to the Lyric Theater 
because the Lyric Theater is where, you, right after the theater, you, you could get five hot dogs for 25 cents. And, uh, or, or six for a quarter, for, uh, uh, use five hot dogs for, tw for 20, uh, 25 cents. And then that, then you had chili. The chili parlor was right there. And you get all the chili you want on there. Wow. Uh, wow. And where was the Lyric Theater? Lyric Theater was right there on, on, uh, Fourth and Capitol. Fourth and Capitol. Okay. No, well, which is K Street. I'm sorry. Okay. Fourth, fourth and K. Okay, terrific, terrific. And it was, that's where I like to go because you, uh, like I say, the Lyric and the Alameda, I could tell you all the theaters that were there yeah. way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were a lot of them, huh? So, um, so back down in Florin, going through elementary school, middle school, high school, uh, did you... Uh, participate in athletics at all? Yes, I played the football. Okay. And I played basketball. In fact, in those days, they had the varsity, the junior varsity, and then you had what they called the C team. Uh, I remember uh, I we were playing Cortland High School, and I... I won the game for them. I sunk the last uh, score for them and won the game. And I remember that I was a class on the, on the C, C team. But I did play on the B team, which uh, the varsity course was the, the main one. And we were playing Christian Brothers High School. Oh, wow. And I remember uh, uh, it was the time that when... At the time, there were only there were only three high schools: Elk Grove, uh, Sacramento, McClatchy, and Grant. Four high schools. Okay. Okay. And that was all, that was the only ones. And I remember we were playing. Uh, oh, and I'm sorry, Christian Brothers. We were playing Christian Brothers, and that, and that's where uh, I was. Uh, uh, Fortunate enough to play um, on my athletic uh, period mostly mm -hmm. at Christian Brothers and uh, at Elk Grove High School. Gotcha. Okay. So when did you graduate from high school? I graduated in 1945. 1945. They show, show listing as 46, but the reason 45 is my mother was sick and no one was there after my father passed away. Okay. Uh, I, they kept me back one year. Mm -hmm. Where I could be with my mother. I gotcha. Okay, so let's go back to um, World War II and maybe the days leading up to World War II, Pearl Harbor. Um, can you kind of illustrate for us your emotions at that time, kind of the climate in Florence, obviously with a large Japanese American demographic? Um, it, it must have been memorable it was traumatic because i i hated to see my japanese friends leave mm -hmm. because we were so close and uh, of course they were evacuated and one person and when i say evacuated they went for Sar master sergeant john Boloshnevich, who was in charge of the evacuation procedures there we loaded people on Pullman cars, sent them to Camp Kohler, yeah. which was by near McClellanville. Right. There was one person in the community that stated, no, they were loaded on cattle cars. I said, that never, ever happened. And every time this person would see me coming in a lecture, and there's lecture, she'd leave the room because she knew that I would put her straight. Mm, okay. And she, and she didn't like that one bit. Did and, you ever? I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Gus. Oh, I never mentioned the names of the people okay. because the relatives are still alive today. Okay. Did you ever um, have a chance to go up to Kohler? I know the 
camp was only there, or the assembly center was only there for about three months before folks were moved out to another spot. But did you ever go up there? I never went to Camp Kohler, uh, but I did go uh, right prior to that. I went to, to McClellan Field. Oh, okay. See, which was the Kohler was right next to it. Right, right. So uh, I, I did go to, to McClellan Field. So tell me about your World War II experience. What what did you do during that time? Well, during the war in 1946, uh, I uh, joined the National Guard. Okay. And I, oh, I figured, well, I was only there for a little while because my mother was sick that they weren't going to recognize it. But today, I received not too long ago, and Jared will verify that, I have a citation from the United States government from Congress making me an honorary lifetime member of the Marine Corps oh my for my service to the, the servicemen. And you cannot get that unless you are a veteran. And I told him, well, I was only in it's, we don't care how long you were in or out. It, you were registered at that time in the National Guard. You are a veteran. Okay. You do not get the benefits the veterans get today, but you are a veteran. So that's the only way that they would recognize me in the Marine Corps. Okay. All right. So I want to take a, a bit of a step back. So um, you would have been 17 near the end of the war, correct? 17, right. 18. Um, so you you were in Florin um, attending high school, um, middle school. Um, so during that stretch of time, what was it like knowing that so many folks, I think there were around 450 Japanese Americans in Florin before the war started. What was Florin like without them there? Well. Florin, like I say, uh, I did a lot of communicating with the Japanese community and the people because that's all that we did. We'd come down there and we'd sell meat to their markets when I would go to their markets. And uh, uh, this is how we became real close friends of the Japanese community. And they enjoyed being my family and their family being together because the culture's both mixed. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. And that was real, real nice then. I, I really enjoyed everything that went on. Uh, it was a happy days, really. Yeah, yeah. So um, what happened after you graduated from high school? Well, yeah, right after that, I, like I say, I went into the National Guard. And then because of the short time, my mother was sick. And my father passed away, uh, a friend of mine, who later became the best man at my wedding. We went back up into Washington. And I mm -hmm. went up there and uh, stayed up there for a few days. Then I came back to Sacramento. And uh, I basically did whatever I had to do on the ranch to help my parents okay. milk cows. Uh, irrigate, plow the fields, whatever needed to be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what was your career? What did you decide to do? Well, I really wanted to be, I really wanted to be a, uh, ar a arbitrator, which was today was arbitration person that goes between labor and management, yeah. an arbiter. I wanted to become a newscaster but because of the my mother being sick and everything like that, and we were living out on the ranch, I couldn't get downtown to to do this. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was, the traveling was unless my father took me down there or my uncle, uh, I had no way of getting down there. And you would have gone to Sacramento Sacramento Junior College, I assume. I went I went to Sacramento City College. Okay. And I went to Grant Technical College. Okay, and when, when did you attend Grant Technical College? I attended Grant Technical College in 19, 
I believe it was in 19, uh, uh, I think it was, uh, uh, excuse me, hold, hold off one minute. We, you got there when I attended Grant Technical? No, we didn't, we didn't talk about that. Okay, so the assumption would be sometime in the late 40s, early 50s? Yeah, I remember going to City College. There. Okay, okay. And I remember going to uh, Grant Tech. Okay, so what was your chosen career? My chosen career, was, if I wanted to do it, was to be a newscaster. Right. And uh, because I didn't do that, I went into the, uh, my brother who played professional baseball for the old Sacramento Solons, the, the original Solons. Okay, can you state your brother's name? Yes, yeah, Sam Canellis. Got it. He's the owner of, uh, he and his family, of Old Ironsides Bar and Restaurant on, oh, ten, on 10th right. and S. Okay. okay, he played 1943 for the Sacramento Solons, he and Richie Myers, who went on to the Chicago Cubs, and uh, Ernie Banks came in and they forced uh, Richie out of there, and because he was a, a pitcher and he wasn't a regular, they, they uh, sent him back to Sacramento, and he was a pitcher here in those days, like Tony Freitas, who was oh, also yeah. very prominent here. and. Uh, my brother Sam uh, then got traded to uh, the uh, International League and he went up to uh, Spokane, Washington and uh, he played up there in the, in the minor leagues. Oh, the Indians, right? Spokane yeah. Indians. Okay, so um, you value history. And when you go out and you talk to the kids, um, like you do, um, what, are the, what are the things that you try to impart to them? What are the most important things that you think they need to know about Florin? I tell them that Florin is their home. Florin is their community. Florin, the town you live in, has made history, and you ought to be proud of it regardless of what ethnic religion or what color or race, this is your home, this is your town. Be proud of it and always honor it because it was famous. So um, another question that I think a lot of people consider as they drive down Florin Road and uh, hear about the town is, how did it get named? Florin Road. At, at, at that time, there was one of the early farmers. His name was Asa Gardner. Okay. He had a son-in-law, and his name was Florin Colbaker. So James Rudder needed someone to oversee his ranch while he was going around purchasing different stuff to bring back and process. And he asked Mr. Gardner if he could borrow his son-in-law for a while to oversee his ranches. He says, yes. So Florin Colbaker came down there and became the manager of the James Rudder estate. Okay. And uh, uh, Florin Colbaker and his brother were prominent in the starting Sacramento in 1849. They both were prominent on that. Uh, Florin uh, the historians uh, claimed Florin was named after the wildflowers, Flora. Uh, I proved to them it was wrong. And I, sh and I went to the Sacramento County and City both. Okay. And, and, and showed them, the, well, what do you want us to do about it? I says, well, you could tell the truth. Well, we, we were already told this and this. And I says, put it down there, down below, that Florin was named by Florin Colbaker. Oh, it was named by him? It was named by Florin? Yes. Ah, okay. All yes. right. And, okay. and so I had him straighten that out. And then the whole family showed up one day, and I have a letter here that uh, I showed back to you. I think Jared has it. Okay. And the whole family showed up, and they were very, very excited and very overwhelmed that the town was named after their 
one of their descendants. Right, right. And they all showed up. And uh, uh, there's a lot of things that, uh, the, like the city of Sacramento and the county. Yeah. I'd call the county sheriff's office. I'd say, hey, you got a picture of the Florin jail? Oh, there never was a jail in Florin. I said, I beg your pardon. I played in the jail. You played in the jail. I played in the jail a later. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the jail was a little tiny, uh, it was like a little tiny room. Okay. Uh, 10 by 12 and uh, had bars on it. And Del Can was a county constable. There were no, at that time, there was no sheriff as a constable. Okay. And they'd incarcerate the people overnight and bring them into Sacramento to be tried the next day. Odell Can was the county constable. And later on, when uh, the service station, Bratton's service station, Bratton used it as a storage room. But I played in there, and I remember very well because I played in my own, with the, uh, uh, in the Western Orchestra there, uh, with uh, Colton, okay, and on uh, which was right across the street, across the way, in the Florin Redmond Hall, which is still there today. Okay, is that that big pink building? It's still built. In. It's okay. on the National Register. Okay, it can never be torn down. It could be sold, but it can never be torn down because it's registered as a na in the national deal. So, Gus, if if I'm driving down Florin Road and I'm heading uh, I'm heading east and I'm thinking I wonder if there are any buildings left from mm -hmm. say the 1920s 30s and 40s yes the are, old, are there a few buildings that you'd yeah. recommend someone try to go by and take yeah. a look at to get yeah. a taste of old Florin you could the the old the church is still there yeah and right on Pritchard and and uh, Florin Road Okay. And then, of course, the Florin East School, which later, was, oh, which is still there, and now it's Epi Johnson, some kind of school. Um, and it was right on the corner of uh, McCumber and Florin. And then, uh, of course, uh, Akiyama's uh, department store. Okay. Uh, no, Tanagawa's department store is still there. Akiyama's is no longer there. It tore it down. But those are the buildings. Oh, and then of course there was French's garage on the corner of Florin and French Road. Okay. And uh, Harry French himself, the, orig the original man who would later the, become the fire chief of Florin, he uh, lived there and he had his, the, the second Studebaker dealership in California. The first one was up in Williams. Okay. And he had the French Studebaker garage, and of course, he had a garage and he maintained different equipment for people, farmers. Okay, so those are the places to take a look at. So yeah. um, what to you is the, the single biggest change you've seen in Florin? Well, today they've widened the streets. Yeah. The road's been widened out. Uh, the, of course, the old church is still there. And, of course, they, uh, they had the Florence School, the West School, where I went to. Uh, Duke Cahill was very prominent at that time in construction. Oh, okay. And he purchased the Florin West School I went to, and he wanted to make a restaurant out of it. But the county of Sacramento says, no, you can't do that. We're going to widen the road. You've got to move back to the building 50 feet. Being a brick building, Duke says, the hell with it. I'll tear it down. And that's what he did. Okay. He tore it down. Okay. But I have bricks, original bricks that are on display. And I, Jared, did we brought Brighton? Did I bring a brick here? Okay, well, I'll have to send one here. We would love I, a brick. We would. Yeah. That'd be great. So yeah. um, I've thrown a lot of questions at you, um, but I've got I've got one more, and that's: um, Do you have any final thoughts on Florin, on life 
in Sacramento County growing up? Yeah, Florin was was a place to, to really live because you were away from everything that was going on down here, congestion, and you lived out on the ranch. Uh, you got to do what you wanted to do. If you wanted to go out and visit with your neighbor, which was not too far away, and uh, or if you wanted to uh, go play with some of your school chums, that was it. It was nice. You know, another question occurred to me. What, what kind of wildlife would you run into living down in the Florin area? Well, the Florin, of course, are a lot of jackrabbits. <laughs> and my dad... Did you hunt? Uh, uh, yeah, we hunted. Yeah. We hunted very, very... We hunt pheasants, and uh, we hunted quail, and we hunted jackrabbits. Yes, and then, of course, uh, I was very prominent in going with, at that time, later on in later life, Jack Sellers, who owned Coca-Cola Company, passed away. We'd go to uh, Idaho and Montana. Oh, on, okay. On deal. Okay, okay. Well, um, this concludes our interview. Gus, I want to say thank you very much. Oh, you're it's an absolute honor having you join us today and, and participate in this interview. I'm James Scott. This is the Special Collections of the Sacramento Public Library, also known as the Sacramento Room. It's May 5th, 2008. That concludes our interview at 10.50 uh, a.m.